Congratulations, you've just completed your dental implant surgery. Now you're wondering, what can I do to make sure this is successful? Hi, I'm Dr. Brett Langston. I'm a prosthodontist and the director of dental implant and aesthetic specialists of Atlanta here in Brookhaven, Georgia. And I'm here to help you watch your mouth. So for the first 24 to 48 hours after surgery, it's very important to keep your heart rate down uh, because we need to control your bleeding. Um, a lot of times blood is necessary to help the areas heal, but excess blood is not what we want. So for that first 24 to 48 hours, uh, no strenuous exercise, no going to the gym, uh, no hopping on the treadmill, no running around and wrestling with your kids, uh, no strenuous gardening in the backyard. Basically, you want to take it easy. If you want to go on a nice, long, slow walk, something like that that keeps your heart rate low. The main reason we don't want you to get strenuous exercise is that any strenuous exercise is going to lead to the heart rate going up. And when the heart rate goes up, that means the blood starts pumping faster. Uh, in these areas where we've got sutures and we've got new tissue attachment, the last thing we want to do is create a lot of pressure that might cause those areas to, to, to tear and the healing won't be successful. Another thing to keep in mind is I want you to avoid anything too hot or too cold. Uh, this especially applies while you're still numb. Uh, not so much the cold, but the hot, because a lot of times you can scald or you can cause tissue damage if you drink something that's too hot and because of the numbness, you're not aware of it. With the numbness, especially, is don't eat or drink anything right after while you're still numb. Uh, unfortunately, we have a lot of patients that eat something, think they're doing great, think they're chewing something, and all of a sudden it turns out they're biting on their cheek, they're biting on their tongue, and because they're numb, they don't feel it. But I can promise you when that numbness wears off, it's just gonna add an extra site that's sore and uncomfortable. As we've talked about before, I want you to avoid smoking, uh, spitting, and anything that makes a suction. So uh, the main reason for that, any kind of suction, whether it's sucking through a straw, uh, sucking on a cigarette, uh, it basically what that can do is it can pull out the blood clot. And the blood clot is absolutely necessary to stay in the wound to help it heal. Uh, removal of that blood clot can also cause dry socket, which is not fun. Uh, it can also cause pain and discomfort and delayed healing. Uh, and so in order to maximize your healing and minimize the healing time, avoid smoking or sucking through a straw. Also avoid spitting. It may feel natural to spit if you do have some blood or extra saliva or extra fluid in your mouth, but the action of, of drawing that saliva or that extra blood and spitting it out can also pull out the blood clot. So I know it feels weird, I know it's not the most attractive thing, but if you have extra fluid, lean over the, lean over the sink and just kind of let it fall out or let it go into a cup. It's only for the first 24 to 48 hours, but it's absolutely crucial because if you make the action of, of drawing that saliva together to, to spit it out, you could also pull out the blood clot. Don't touch the site with your finger or your tongue. Uh, a lot of people have the tendency to go in there and poke and feel, especially when you're numb, you wanna see what's going on, or 48, 24 hours, it's starting to feel better, so you wanna dig around there and poke around. Definitely don't do that. Um, you know, If you're anything like me, if you've got a cut on your hand, you're always playing with it to see if it heals. If you do that in your mouth, it's just gonna take healing even longer. So do your best, don't stick your fingers in there. Um, you know, a lot of times if you've got a suture, don't pull your lip out to look at it because the, the action of pulling is gonna tear. So basically you wanna treat this area as gingerly as possible. Give it the good 24, 48 hours to kind of rest and heal um, and avoid going in there and manipulating and kind of messing with its healing process. Make sure to take your antibiotics. Um, a lot of times when we're doing an implant, we are actually introducing a foreign body into your body. And so the body has a natural reaction to wanna to fight that. So we need to kind of use antibiotics to kind of calm the area down, make sure there's nothing uh, foreign in there that the body is, is gonna attack. Um, it'll help the healing process. So take your antibiotics, follow the whole order all the way through. Um, that'll definitely help the healing process. If you do feel like you've got something in there, some of the soft foods that we ask you to eat, uh, you can rinse gently with warm salt water, that's fine. But again, don't spit it out, kind of lay over the sink, let it come out. Um, and on that note, definitely avoid anything really hard, um, especially if you don't have anything to protect that extraction site. Hard foods can poke right into there and, and either cause the suture dislodge, tear the tissue. Uh, these are all things you wanna avoid right after surgery. If you have a, an immediate implant, crown or uh, immediate denture if you had all your teeth taken out, you definitely want to eat softer foods because you don't want to put a lot of pressure on the prosthesis. You don't want to put a lot of uh, torque or a lot of digging in on that. You want to let everything kind of calm and heal as naturally as possible. We always have a follow-up appointment, whether it's the next day or on the Monday following a Friday surgery, because we want to go over the medical instructions and make sure everything was clear and you don't have any questions or concerns. Because sometimes on the big day of surgery, when we go over the instructions, you're more focused on, you know, what's gonna happen and not as focused on the aftercare. So we always follow up and make sure you have all your questions answered. If you wanna know in detail what type of foods you should eat and what type of foods you should avoid after dental surgery, click on the video and follow our link. I'll see you over there. Again, I'm Dr. Brett Langston, and I'm helping you watch your mouth.